everybody, Sonia Rollins. We are here with Back Talk, and I'm here with the president of the chamber, Rick Parker. We have missed you. We've been out from our Back Talk episodes for a bit, and um, are excited. Thank you to BCAP for helping us get back on track. The chamber's been busy, and we thought the best way to come back to you is to talk about a what a chamber is. We'll have a little refresh on that, but then also talk about what the Burlington Area Chamber of Commerce has been doing, and we've been doing a lot. Rick, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, Sonia. Let's start with the obvious, right? Because for those who haven't come in contact with the chamber, although I really want to admit I'm not sure how, or for those who um, don't know, because chambers have changed over the course of years that people have been used to them, you know, if someone were to ask you, what does a Chamber of Commerce do? I think it's easiest to start with what a Chamber of Commerce isn't. Yeah. Um, historically, I think people of, certainly of my generation, saw a Chamber of Commerce with some place that you would call and say, hey, I'm going to be traveling. Send me those fancy brochures where, so I know what I'm going to be doing when I stay there. And um, it's really evolved to be, especially in our area, a much different organization. It's a, it's a business membership organization with no association to, to any government, whether it be local, state, federal. And it's really just a, a group that advocates on behalf of businesses, but also understands the relationship between um, the business community and the residential community, and tries to tries to fit that uh, to fit between those two organizations. Right. You know, it's interesting you say what a chamber isn't because I think what it isn't is what people still think it is. Right. I mean, it's it, it's almost like the opposite of what all the work that's going out there it's still there's like a mindset of what a chamber of commerce does now let's take that to another level because there are a lot of chambers around but the BACC is busy it's it's doing its thing and it's um, kind of working in a bunch of different areas if you were to tell somebody today you should join the chamber because um, and I know it varies with different businesses right but if we were to really just think about that for a minute you know, who's a person that looks to the chamber? What's that profile look like, or is there not really one profile? Well, I think, it, you know, it's, it's dangerous to say it's something for everyone, but it, it truly is. I'm asked that question on a regular basis. Why should I join the chamber? It would be easy for me to go into a long statement of what the benefits of the chamber membership are, but I ask them to simply find somebody in the chamber now and talk to them. Ask them what their experience has been. Because what the chamber provides for all uh, businesses of all shapes and sizes is meaningful, um, meaningful content. Today, it's very difficult um, to do it on your own. Yeah. I think we've become a society of, of customer-focused businesses, and you have to be. If you don't listen to the customer, you'll be out of business. We're the same way. What do the businesses need? What do the charitable organizations in town need? How do you make that connection? And how do you um, how do you give yourself the best chance to be successful? Um, we certainly have insights that that people wouldn't get on their own. Right. But it's also finding that partnership between education and workforce and the businesses that are looking for those workers. Um, we're very fortunate in our region to be at unprecedented uh, low unemployment. That brings a multitude of, of challenges for, for businesses to get good workers. And remember that the, the way a local economy works is through businesses employing people and people finding places to live and being part of a community, but it all starts with having a job. So um, we try to, to be that uh, go-between between people looking for jobs and people uh, who are willing to hire them, but also to have all the amenities here to attract some of the larger businesses so the smaller businesses can be successful. Yeah, you know, it's funny because obviously I'm a member of the chamber and um, and you and I are involved in a lot of things because, you know, when you sit on a board, I'll tell people this, when you sit on a board, you know, and you're active on a board and you have a president who's active doing his thing every day, we take it for granted that people know what a chamber should do, whether that's for the residents whether the information we get out, the events that are put out, or on a business level. But when I try to take that hat off and think about what we do just in general and what it means for a small business owner or a person who individually goes to network or goes to do things, everybody has a different reason for walking into some of the rooms. We just came off of a great networking event yesterday at the Bancroft. Thank you, Bancroft. They do a great job. Um, but the beauty of it was when you look at this room, and what used to happen five years ago where we were hoping people would come and five years later where 
the room is packed, everybody's in there, they're networking with each other, and even if you don't need somebody on a business level that night, you are connecting with people that somewhere along the line in the course of your day, whether that's personally or professionally, you need someone's help, and what better place than to look within the networking group that you're in or the group that helps you um, on, a, on a variety of different levels. That was my little five minutes on the chamber in my spend. How'd I do? You did great. <laughs> if I could just go one step further yes. with that. People want to do business uh, with people that they trust, and yes. once they trust that person, they look to, to that person for guidance on other questions. You know, where can I find somebody who can help me with employment? Where can I find someone with, with help with uh, taxes or, or access to the workforce? We've found that it's, that it's a team concept. Yes. It really is. Um, the, the chamber has been successful in the past few years because people understand that it is a lot easier to do things through the team uh, process than it is doing it alone. And uh, I think with the advent of so the information age, as a small business owner, which, which I was three times, um, you are overloaded with information. So it's, it's incumbent upon organizations like the Chamber to sort out what's really important to businesses, to give them an idea of maybe impending legislation that's coming down, and to give them uh, an opportunity to have a say and not asking them all the time, hey, you, listen, you have to go to the state house in order yeah. to be a part of it, but let them know that legislation is coming up, and we're very fortunate with our, with our state representative and, and state senator that they're accessible. So we bring them to the chamber to discuss impending legislation and really have a say on it and prepare for what those changes will be. Um, a great example of that is last year uh, when we had the grand bargain, there were a number of um, of new uh, legislation that, that came into effect, the paid family leave, yeah. uh, time and a half. It was an opportunity to have business at, at the table saying what, um, what the impact was going to be, part particularly to the small businesses. And, and to have that back and forth communication so they did have a seat at the table while they were still able to run their business. And I think that's something that we're really proud of because we are, um, we listen. We listen and, and we understand what the struggles are for small business. One of the other challenges that, uh, that we've seen locally is, um, it's something I don't want to talk a lot about, but online shopping. Online shopping has an impact. I know that it's easy to do. I know that uh, you know, the, the convenience factor is, is, is hard to beat, but what that does is it stops business coming to the local communities, the mom and pop shops that used to be able to count on on that business to have a livelihood. That's right. Um, it also, you know, it takes away from the local tax base brings more trucks onto the road delivering these things. There are unintended consequences of it, and I don't think I'm gonna be able to go up against uh, Jeff Bezos here today, <laughs> but I will say that, that um, you know, supporting your local business is more important than ever. You know, it's a good point. Local is such a huge factor in, uh, in like, a thriving economy isn't the right word, because certainly we thrive around here, but in keeping that local feel and keeping people who want to do, the entrepreneurs of the world who want to open up a small business, you don't, you don't know how much just thinking of them and going to them supports them, right? As Correct. opposed to the convenience of doing things, and we're all guilty of a little of that convenience, right? Where we want to order some things, and we're not asking you to take that completely off the plate, but we're asking you to remember the locals. Yeah, it's yeah. There, there is an impact. The thing um, that's great about this community is we've been very successful at keeping a strong commercial tax base here. And while I don't want to make this a, a conversation about taxes, it's important to have some of the larger employers. And we're not talking about your average employers. The, they're national headquarters for national companies yeah. that, um, that other areas would love to have them here. You've got to constantly look at what's the next thing. What's yeah. the next thing? And we're seeing, um, obviously, with Millipore coming to the area, there are a lot of small businesses that would love to be here to kind of ride that wave of the life sciences. So we work uh, with the town and with uh, local legislation to try to make sure that we're not closing the door on whatever the next wave is. Um, I think there's, there's areas, and you could point to Detroit, that thought, you know, people are always gonna need cars. Yeah. Competition comes from many places, and especially in, in the technology age, you've gotta be very careful to remain diversified and make it a place where small businesses can come and you know, have the next Microsoft or the next uh, Nuance or, or Keurig or Oracle start here. It's, it's um, 
really interesting that we talk about economic engines a lot, right? And Burlington, anybody who's been involved in town politics or at least just has been watching the evolution of Burlington over the past number of years, the economic engine has always been um, all these different things, and they're of different trades. So for example, in the retail arena, we always said the Burlington Mall, the Simons Properties, was an economic engine that thrives, that Leahy Clinic stands as you know an economic engine, that other small companies, like you said, look to place themselves around. You know, And then you have the locations of Millipore coming and Keurig being there, and all of these different things that we always talked about. As large as they seem, Rick, there are people in there who are local, right? And they're going to work every day. And then there are small businesses that are locating around them. So when we say mom and pop, we always think stores or we think coffee shops, and they are. They are mom and pop um, places. But you also have to think about some of the small businesses that an economic engine of some of those larger corporations that place themselves here feed as well. I mean, is that, a, is that the right way to look at Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. One of the other things that we have we're f very fortunate in town to have uh, Northeastern's Innovation Campus here. Yeah. Um, I won't tell you how long ago I was taking classes up there, but let's just say it wasn't last week. It um, was two years ago. Okay, good, yeah. thank you. <laughs> right. um, but there is the combination of, of academia, industry, and government pooling their resources. There are some phenomenal things that are going on, on yeah. there. And the great thing about it for us is that while they're studying and coming up with the research and the innovation, once it gets to the commercial application, they have to get off of campus because it's a nonprofit educational institution. So the resources are there, and when it's time for them to set up shop, and it usually is you know, a, a six to 12 person organization, they would love to be in this area. So we wanna make sure the chamber is actually embracing this and put together a team of, of local business people right. that can meet the needs of companies coming off of that campus. And it's really, um, it's the, the future is right. right here in Burlington. This is something that's not anywhere in the country and we're fortunate to have it right here. Okay, so um, let's go one step further. I'm a resident of Burlington, you're a resident of Burlington, proud of that. Absolutely. Absolutely, so um, I love the fact that I not only live here and not only have raised my family here, as have you, mm -hmm. um, but that we're working here, right? We work in and around the Burlington area. And sometimes I think we also take for granted that everybody who is out there and living in the community understands some of the um, value. I think we all understand, and a lot of people talk about the challenges of um, you know, having a vibrant community, right? The challenges of a vibrant community are the challenges of traffic and things that happen in the course of a day. But with the, the upside of having those challenges is the background, and you said it perfectly. We, we're not here to discuss taxes per se, but I think um, as residents, it, it would be nice to be able to see that from the other side. We have the good fortune of seeing both sides of the coin, right? If you were to deliver a message to maybe residents who don't, who aren't really, either don't do business in Burlington or aren't necessarily looking from this side out but kind of seeing it from the other direction, you know, what's the message of, of Burlington and, you know, and the thriving business portion of it? I think you, you only have to step over the town border into any other community. Yeah. Um, the chamber, we are the Burlington Area Chamber. We work with a lot of the local cities and towns. We see what's going on out there. Um, just to give an example, I mean, Melrose recently had um, an override, Prop 2 and a half override, to get a teacher. Right. We are so fortunate in this town that the commercial tax base keeps the funds coming that we don't struggle with some of those everyday struggles that are happening just across town borders. And we we partner with a lot of organizations that are in this region, and this is the model that they look for. Yes. <coughs> We've done a great job of separating the commercial areas, predominantly on one side of town, with residential having very little impact from that. What we hear every day from residents here is the traffic is an issue. Let me tell all of those people that traffic is an issue in the region, and you have a choice you will have the traffic no matter what, but you're either the destination or the cut through. 
every one of the cities and towns that, that border us have exactly the same traffic issues that we have. Agreed. And it is, it's a sign of, of prosperity and a place that people want to be, but it's a simple rule of economics. If you're the destination, you receive the tax benefit of the companies that have located there and the employment opportunities. If you're not, you're the cut through and your roads and your time in the car will be exactly the same as those in Burlington that, that benefit from having those businesses here. So take a ride around from the towns. I mean, we've said before, Birch and, uh, Burlington is very fortunate that if you were to put a bowl over the top of it, we have world-class employers, we have world-class retailers, world-class uh, Residents. res restaurants, <laughs> residents, of course, on, yeah. saying, world-class health yes. facilities, yes. research. It's here. It's here. Um, you don't have to go, you know, 100 miles away to, f to see people who are doing without. They're, they're playing catch up. But we have to be looking forward um, and not, s you know, resting on our, on our laurels to understand where the market goes, what's the next wave, yes. and certainly health sciences in the medical industry, this area um, of the country is, is leading it in the world of, of healthcare and life sciences. And we have to make sure that we allow businesses to come here to be that next wave and to keep the employment here. Yeah, yeah, you know, um, I like the concept of if you put a bowl over us. If you were to put a bowl over Burlington, you really could stay here and, and have every need addressed that you have. However, like you said, sometimes when you're inside said bowl, you forget that you're not a gated community. And if you, if you don't release that a little bit, you know, you risk losing what's coming. And Burlington has never really done that before. We've always been on the forward thinking philosophy. I hope it continues that way because when you stay on that forward thinking mode, you always will remain the destination. And I think we've, um, we have always talked about, you know, Burlington is Burlington. Uh, one of our former town administrators loved saying that. Bob Mercer used to say Burlington is Burlington if I had a dollar for every time he said it. But, you know, Burlington is Burlington because of what's going on. And um, in order to keep it Burlington, you have to continue to be forward thinking that way. Um, all right, for those of you who've been watching Back Talk a lot, or I hope a lot in past episodes, um, we have always highlighted different members. We always did foodie because Let's be honest, I'm a food girl and there's plenty to talk about there, and I promise you we will bring you those back too. But in our new comeback of Backtalk, we also decided we've got a lot of other members who are, are outside the food arena. You know, you might want to hear about them as well. How's your back feel, by the way? My back feels great. Knees? Knees? High Perfect knees. right All now. Right. Should you ever have some issues that you need a physical therapist, we have a great member we want a chamber spotlight this time. Um, I am excited to tell you that we took a ride out to see HDPT. I always have to say that kind of slowly so that perfectly. I hit it right. Um, and the great physical therapists that do work there. Uh, we'll be right back after Chamber Spotlight. Thank you. For our first Chamber Spotlight, our host, Sonia Rollins, met up with HD Physical Therapy, co-founder and CEO, Ed Harding. Listen, I, let's get right down to what we need to talk about, which is, what do you do here? I mean, everybody knows a physical therapist is a physical therapist, but not all are made the same. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about HDP. Absolutely. I mean, we started in 2012, um, you know, kind of came into the community as far as Glenn and I being the two owners. We've been therapists for 15, 16 years. So we knew that we had, you know, the right recipe to try to offer the community uh, an availability to the healthcare kind of world and the physical therapy side that, you know, we could try to help treat patients in all stages of life that way. A lot of the times when you have an injury and there's just this a prolonged stay for how long you've been struggling with that injury, you can't get back to work, you can't do what you need to be doing, whether it be back to your activities of daily living. And then we help kind of bridge some of that a little bit and with our direct access availability in Massachusetts. So it allows you to come right into physical therapy without getting a referral from your doctor and then insurance is able to cover it. When am I supposed to call that physical therapist? Like, how much pain am I supposed to endure <laughs> sure, sure. before I call my physical therapist? I mean, the minute it stops you from being able to function with whatever it is important to you, whether it be holding your grandkids, whether it be playing golf, whether it be, you know, getting to work, uh, you know, you're having pain when you wake up in the middle of the night. But if it's stopping you from doing something or it's altering some of your mechanics to make that happen, I mean, we're the movement specialists. At least just come in. We can do like a quick kind of once over, you know, a little consult that way. Take a look to see if there's anything else going on. And minimally we can say, hey, here's a few stretches to do. Here are a couple exercises you can do on your own and then kind of go from there. Or we can take it to the next level and see if you need any type of like, a, you know, extended plan of care that way. 
With same-day appointments, HDPT is conveniently located, so you can get your physical therapy after work while avoiding rush hour traffic. So tell me about Burlington a little bit, because we always are intrigued why people come into Burlington. Burlington was a great spot. I mean, we knew it was up and coming. We could see it thriving. We saw the economy boosting. And then yeah, just and then the minute we kind of get in and started to meet people like yourself and Rick and the chamber and the environment and the community around, it was just welcome with open arms. And we just kind of knew it was the right spot for what we wanted. We asked about the patient experience. Every patient gets an extensive evaluation. We spend about an hour with the patient. We run strength and, and uh, range of motion exercises and testing that we do to test ligaments and muscles and things. We have some unique ways to be able to test the, you know, the structural integrity of some of the joints, some of your ability to move. And this is where we kind of sit down with you and explain to you kind of what we're, our clinical findings are. What I have to give you credit for is you not only have come into a community and done good business in what you do, but you've also wrapped yourself around the community and wrapped yourself around the chamber. So we at the chamber are very proud of, you know, kind of having that network ability. I wonder if you can tell me what, this is where I'm going to pay you. No, yep. I'm only kidding. Yep. I wonder if you can tell me, you know, what that relationship has meant to you, the relationship of being a member of the chamber or a chamber member, really. Yeah, I, it ties right into what our philosophy is and kind of where we're at as far as like HD physical therapy overall. I mean, we're, we're healthcare providers. We're here to help. We want to be able to help people through that scenario. And then we're a small business. So, I mean, not to knock a big conglomerate type of situation, but that's just not who we are. So we are very much tied into the community and who better to be connected with than some of the chamber members that are also involved in that same scenario. And if we're helping each other out and we only think of HD as the four walls, that's about as big as it'll ever be. If we can reach out to the community and help more people and then we can have multiple therapists helping people the amount of people that we can have an impact on is amazing so the chamber is a great you know resource for us and a great tool to do that and a great way to give back to the community so it's been fantastic another plus for HDPT is all insurances are accepted you know we pride ourselves on the fact that we were providers for all insurance companies some are fun to deal with some are not fun to deal with but at the end of the day it was about the patient so we said let's make it so that way no one ever has to worry about wondering whether they can come into our four walls and be treated. At the end of the day, whether it be, whether you do have insurance, you don't have insurance, whether it be a, a mass health plan, a Blue Cross, it doesn't matter what you have for insurance. We're here, we're here to help, we can accept it. We're providers for all of them. I mean, it took a lot of years to be able to do that, but I mean, that's what we want to make sure that we do. And I don't want anyone to ever feel like they can't come here for some odd reason and be treated for whatever they're kind of dealing with. From HD Physical Therapy, with host Sonia Rollins, I'm B News reporter Tad Stefanak. It's really uplifting, right? When you when you're able to see. Thank you, by the way, to HD PT. See how Very I had good. to again pause <laughs> for letting us come into their office. It was um, it's actually eye opening to see how people work. When we were on break, you were talking about how we're almost like that healthcare feel, right? Yeah, well, I think you know Ed, what he does for his customers, and he talked about. You know, it's a lifelong thing and, and taking care of people. That's really what we do with businesses. Um, there's certainly some that come to us that are mature businesses, but others are just starting up and we try to give them the best chance to be successful. Yeah, you know, um, I was saying to Rick that the beauty of Chamber Spotlight is you get to dig a little bit deeper into some of your members. I mean, again, we're around people a lot, so we know what people are doing and the good work they're doing, but when community gets to see them a little bit deeper. They understand there's many facets to being a business owner or to doing something in a community. And one of the ones that I know a lot of the Burlington residents know, um, but I'm not sure they understand to the magnitude because everything's local, right? You only understand what touches you personally. We have a lot of charitable, really charitable businesses in this community, Com um, businesses who care and like to give back. So, you know, let's touch on that a little bit, like the charitable side of being in business in a town like this. I would say that's probably among the most rewarding parts of this job. Yeah. Is when the camera's not on, when you're with people that really care about the community that they're in. They understand that it's not a matter of just going and making money. Business yeah. is not just about making money. Certainly you want to offer employment opportunities to the people that work there. But it's becoming part of the community that really makes that bond and has, has an opportunity for people to understand what's behind it. The, I've got to say, the young people coming out of school today, they not only want to belong to an organization that is, is doing you know, great technology or something, they want to belong to an organization that has some social concern. And 
many of the larger companies come to us saying, you know, we're looking to partner with an organization, can you recommend someone? And we always say, well, let's sit down and talk about that because maybe, um, maybe it's children that they want to um, be involved with, with education, women's rights, the environment, but there's always something that really fuels the employees yes. and the business to become part of the community. It's, it's a great time to be, um, to be in business, but getting that connection to community and really making a, a real impact in the town or the area that you're in is important to people. And it's important to the people that work for you too. I think I think it's a two-part thing. As a as a business, you are giving back, and it's important on your business profile, and it's important of what you believe personally. And then those you employ really have a value, you know, believe that value too. Um, we are down to a minute and a half, so here's what I want to say on two parts. Um, the first is we didn't even touch on the BACC Charitable Foundation, which is, like you said, a really great part of the Chamber of Commerce for us. We've given um, to many different charitable organizations. There are so many great benefits with the Black Tie and the Harold Dulong Scholarship Luncheon was just coming up. Thank you, Londanas, for that one. And um, all of these different things that we give back to, the Chamber is at um, $100,000 in three years of giving is huge. And we're just really. getting started. And we're just getting started. I love that. Um, so, you know, it, uh, let's let's close off with this. Um, in the five years you've been here, um, you know, where do you see, I, it, we're just getting started is like my favorite sentence you said, but, you know, what do you see happening for the chamber? I think that people are starting to understand in the communities that, w that we serve, it shouldn't be an us versus them. The businesses offer so much to the community and vice versa. And knocking down that wall, I, I can see that it's, it's happening. And um, going forward, I think as we continue to, to talk about the benefits of doing business with each other, it'll just get better and better. Agreed. We're glad to be back. Thank you so much, Rick Parker. I'm Sonia Rollins for Back Talk.